Before I get off my soapbox here, I just want you to be good to yourself. Be your own best friend. And don't look anywhere else for approval. But I love Scott. This is, this is hopeless. Adrian, make that a cheesecake with two forks. Uh, three forks, honey. Now, listen, maybe what you need is a makeover. You know, maybe curl your hair or boof on or something. Scott might be getting tired of the same old, same old. Personally, I'm looking to enhance my presentation. Well, this is like talking to a wall. Liza, wait, no, where Liza, are you going? Go. Liza, oh, we heard every word. <sighs> well, she's obviously not over the divorce or Adam. Oh, the poor thing. I don't know, ladies. I heard exactly what Liza said. Heard it loud and clear. Like a bite, Donnie? Yes, I'll have some. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies. I have to leave now. Oh, too bad. It's it nice cold. seeing you. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well, see take you care of that cheesecake. They see you soon, okay. Donnie. Bye. Oh, man, lucky Belinda. At least she's got an exciting job to keep her busy. You got your real estate. What have I got? Oh, darling, real estate not, is not exactly a thrill a minute. And anyway, you've got Petey. Well, he is the light of my life, that's for sure. But what am I going to do without Palmer? I mean, what if he decides to stay over there forever? Oh, my goodness, I gotta get myself a makeover and hop on the next plane headed for the Far East. Oh, you never know what might be set in motion when two cultures or two different uh, people connect, you know? What? No girl is gonna be coming between me and Palmer. How dare you even think of that? Oh. Oh, I get it. You're not thinking that. What? You're not thinking about Palmer and some rice-floured hussy. You're thinking about you and Stuart. Oh, oh, well, don't be silly. Oh, come on, be straight with me now, Marion. I mean, that night that you had with Stuart, was it a one-time thing or what? Yes, of course, it was once and once only. I mean, I wouldn't even entertain the thought of doing anything like that again. Well, whatever you say. Listen, what time do you think it is in Tokyo? I think I'm gonna head home and uh, do the girl thing, you know, sit by the phone and hope the man calls. All right, and... darling, I hope he does. I think I'll take this with me. Can well, then, company? fine, but tell him to send another one in, all right? All right all Bye, right. darling. Good luck. I hope he phones. Marian? Yes? Stuart. Oh, well, hello. Hi. Hi, well, what are you doing here? I was looking for Liza. Oh, she's not here. Oh. So, <laughs> I guess uh, you're just going to have to make do with me, aren't you? <laughs> mm -hmm. How can you lie? Right to my face. The game's up, Adam. We know you killed my mother. No. Tad sent the autopsy report to a real doctor. She died from an internal hemorrhage. She was buried in a pine box in the local cemetery. You, you may think you could get away with murder because you have friends in the right places. The sheriff, the town doctor. How much did you pay him to sign off on the death report? <laughs> Say she died from a fall down a flight of stairs. We both know that's not true. You know, you know, you were there. Admit it, you beat her with a cudgel. You no. beat her and left her to bleed no, no, to no, death. No, no, there was a cudgel. Yes, there was, there was. It was a, it was a, a walking stick. My brother Stuart had carved it for, for joy and given it to her as a gift. Yes, and there was a terrible beating. But you've got to believe me, I never laid a hand on her. Oh, God. It was your father. He attacked her. You take that back. You, you take that back, or I swear, I swear I will kill you. I wanted to thank Liza for all the nice things she did for my son, Scott. They, they told me at the station she was here. Oh, she was. We had a whole table full. We had Belinda, Opal, even little Kelsey. It was sort of a female bonding fest, you know? Well, actually, I don't know. I've never been to one of those. Oh, of course you haven't. <laughs> did, did everything turn out okay? 
No, no, Liza got a terrible headache and she had to turn in early. Oh. Did Adam show up? No. I wish he had. Liza's terrible headaches usually have something to do with my brother. Oh, Stuart, you are such a perceptive man. I am? Yes. You always see things the way they really are. Oh, please, won't you sit down? Okay. Please. You know, Liza's pretending that everything's all right, but she is really devastated about this divorce. Oh, Adam, Adam is too. He's, he, he won't admit, admit it even to himself. Well, your brother and my daughter have an enormous capacity for denial, oh, you know? it's enormous, and they, they can't see straight either. Yes, exactly. Here they are, walking away from the one truly great love of their life. Mm. It's a shame they can't be more like us. In what way? Oh, you know, open, <laughs> spontaneous. Fearlessly embracing personal. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> I was just think, thinking of Adam being, well, b brazenly embracing personal. <laughs> well, what, a free spirit open to possibilities? What's wrong with that now, Stuart? Come on. <laughs> Who'd run Chandler Enterprises? Uh, Liza. <laughs> well, would she want to? I mean, would you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I'd probably hire someone to run the business. <laughs> yeah, that, that way they'd be more likely to have some time to get. Exactly. <laughs> like, um, lying on sunny beaches and uh, rubbing suntan lotion on each other's backs. Picnics. Yes, with strawberries and champagne and <laughs> skinny to big under the moon and gazing at the stars from a steaming hot tub. Oh, they don't know what they're missing, do they? Mm. A lot. <laughs> yes, exactly. We've got to do something about it, don't we? Like, like what? There are no limits. No? Oh, well, uh, maybe a few, perhaps. I if we put our heads together, I'm sure that we could reunite Liza and Adam in no time, Stuart. Unless, of course... You'd, you know, rather not. Oh, no, no, I'd rather. I, I, I like our heads together. Are you okay? Did he hurt you? No, I'm not okay. He's been telling vicious lies about my I've father. I've been telling you the truth. And if you hadn't insisted on staging a haunting all these months, I mean, if you'd have come to me and asked a few questions, perhaps we could have straightened this all Because you would have lied, just you're, like you're lying to me right now. I swear to you. I swear I loved your mother. Love? You begged her to run away with you, and when she refused, you beat her to death. I didn't. You call that love? I didn't touch her. I know it's a shock to find out it was your father. Don't you dare say another word against my father. He was twice the man you are. He was a sadist and a misogynist. All right, all right, all right. Let's that hold it down. Let's hold it down just a couple of My minutes, father okay? loved my mother more than anything. He would have died before he'd hurt her. You really believe that? I know that. He wouldn't lie to me. He wasn't like you. He... I didn't lay a hand on Joy. You, you didn't have to. You beat her with a cudgel. No, it was your father no, no, that did no, that. You say that again, and so help me God, I will... All right, all right, I'm not going to... Whoa, stop it. Stop it. Knock it off. Right now. Do me a favor, please. Try to keep a lid on your temper. Just listen. And you. Oh, you. I don't happen to have a Bible handy, so do me a favor, all right? Tell the truth. And by the truth, I mean the whole truth and nothing but. I mean it, Adam. No more games, no more playing around, no more holding back. Well, we won't get there overnight. Where are we going? The upper regions of ecstasy. <laughs> I mean, you know, getting Liza and Adam back together for good. We're going to have to be firm and relentless, and we're going to have to synchronize our movements at all times, George. Uh, I can synchronize. Oh, yes, you certainly can. <laughs> and, and also, we might have to tell a few tiny white lies, all right? Lies? Well, you know, tricks, sort of strategies, you know? I, 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 I promised Adam th th that I wouldn't do that again. Fiddled with things behind his back. But even for the greater good, for, for his happiness and Liza getting the man she loves? But, but, but if Liza finds out, she'll yell at you. Well, motherhood is a sacrifice, you know, darling? Oh, Marion. You're such a wonderful mother. Oh. Thank you, Stuart. Adam is really lucky to have you, too. Do you really think so? Oh, yes, I, I really do. I, I, I really think that we're alike, you know. We really are passionately committed to the people that we love. 
telling the truth all along. Liar! Hey, just hear him out. Hear him out. Okay, after he's finished, if it doesn't ring true, then you can tear his head off. The resemblance to your mother is uncanny. Looking at you, I'm taken back over 20 years. To Pigeon Hollow? Yes. It was summer. The carnival was in town. I fell in love with Joy, your mother, first time I ever laid eyes on her. At the carnival? I actually, it was at the diner where she worked part-time. I tried to enlist her in conversation. She wouldn't talk to me. No doubt. You, you were hitting on her. She was a married Let woman. Him finish. Stuart loved the carnival. He loved all the rides. We went almost every night. This night he was away riding something, and I heard a woman crying from out behind the trailers. And I went to investigate, and there she was. She was talking to a man. She was saying, Lee, please, don't be mad at me. Don't hit me again. And he hit her in the face and stormed off. My father never would have hit my mother. Okay, go on. What happened? What did you do? I went over to investigate. I asked her if I could help her. She said no. She was frightened that her husband, Lee, would see us together. So she ran away. I knew I had to see her again. So what'd you do? Go back to the diner? Yeah, I went back the next day. They said she had quit her job at the diner to go back to the carny. Yeah, because she wanted to be with my father. Lee, who worked at the carnival, right? Yeah, he was a roustabout. You know, he putting, putting up tents and then running the ride. I went back night after night, but he was always there, watching her. And then one night, she was alone. I guess he was off fixing a ride or something, and I, and I approached her. She gave me her name. <laughs> That's it. But I went back the next day, and she seemed... A little more relaxed. I guess she'd had a pretty good day. So, so we, we talked. And we began a, a, a sort of a friendship. I went back night after night, and we'd talk. One night I found her putting makeup on, on her bruises. Oh, God. If you're going to say my father did it, I will not sit here and listen to it. Camille, it broke my heart. She was such a beautiful woman. She was like a Renaissance painting, a Botticelli Venus. But it wasn't just her beauty. I had never met a woman with that much courage, that kind of strength, that kind of loyalty. And yet she was totally vulnerable. She was like a wild animal that had been caught in a trap. I am warning you. No, no. I would have done anything for her. She gradually began to trust me. And so I asked her to meet me somewhere away from the carnival, somewhere where we could be alone, and I could tell her how I really felt. That I felt a need to protect her. I didn't want to let anyone else hurt her ever again. But it all went terribly wrong. Be because you lost it when she told you to get out of her life. That was the night your father... No, I will not listen to any more of this garbage! Yes, yes! You have to. You have to. Camille, this is what we've been after for weeks. Okay? I've broken my neck trying to get to the bottom of this. I even went to Pigeon Hollow for you. Now, the least you can do for me is hear him out. No matter how much it hurts, no matter how bad it gets. My father adored my mother. He worshipped the ground she walked on. How would you know? What? How would you know? 
How could you know? You said yourself you were raised by your, being raised by your aunt hundreds of miles away. You didn't know your father. I, I know because I have his letter. I know it was his dying wish that I avenge what he did to my mother. Mio, your loyalty to your father is commendable, but it's misguided. So was Joy's. I tried to tell her that, explain that, that last night we were together, but she wouldn't listen. So you killed her? No, I tried to help her. How? What happened? You know what happened. You saw his letter. That letter was a, your father's version of the story. It was not now I a just want to hear Adams. Go on. All right. But if I tell you, Camille, you, are, you must swear never to tell your father. My father's dead. He died over a year ago. Good. I hope he rots in hell. Oh, that's just How could weird. you that's say that? Help a lot. My father was a good man. Honey, you barely even knew your father. And in the meantime, you think you could take it easy. Go on. What happened that night? It was Joy's birthday. Oh. Oh, Adam. It's, it's the most beautiful thing anyone's ever given me. Well, then it's appropriate. Oh. Because you're the most beautiful woman I ever met. But I can't keep it. Why not? Lee would wonder where it came from. Well, just tell him you bought it for yourself. He knows I don't have that kind of money. Joy, there's another reason I asked you to meet me here tonight. What's that? Joy, I want to take you away from here. He doesn't deserve you. Don't say that. Lee loves me. He doesn't love you. He treats you like a dog. Treats you like something he can hold under his thumb and whip when it doesn't behave. No, it's not like that. Joy, he beats you. You gotta save yourself before something terrible happens. Adam, you don't understand. Lee is my husband. I made a sacred vow when I married him. He would never really hurt me. He hurts you every day. Just look at your bruises. Joy, honey, I love you. I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna take you away from here so you won't have to worry about the next time he loses his temper and takes it out on you. You'll end up in a hospital or worse. Joy, I, I know I don't have much to offer you right now. But I swear, someday I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna give you everything you ever wanted. I have everything I want. You have nothing but a husband who hates women. Joy, I, I wanna take you away where he'll never be able to find us. No, it, there's something very precious that I left with my sister. And if I went with you... What? What, what would happen? No, no, I can't. I, I, I can't. She was talking about you. She was afraid if she ran away with me, Lee would fix it so she'd never see you again. Well, thanks to you, I never did see her again. How can I make you believe me? I didn't do it. Can I take a polygraph test? Would that prove it? Oh, please, you just figure out a way to okay, okay. fake let's, the let's test. Okay, let's just finish this, all right? Please, go on. What happened that night? Unbeknownst to me and Joy, Lee had followed us that night. He was waiting in the bushes outside the door when we left. He didn't have the guts to confront me. He waited to get Joy alone. But he wasn't satisfied with a slap in the face or a punch in the ribs. He picked up that heavy walking stick and he beat her within an inch of her life. Oh, I was watching the house. I saw him leave. And then I found her, exactly as he'd left her, bleeding and semi-conscious. He had left her there to die. We realized we needed a plan. So my brother helped me, my brother Stuart. If you don't believe me, ask Stuart. Ted will tell you, Stuart never lies. We realized that the only way we could save your mother's life was to end it. I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't do it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm no good at tricks. But even if I'm helping? Well, you know, it's just that I, I, I don't believe in them. 
And then that's why they don't work for me. It, it's like, like wishing on a star. I mean, you have to believe or the, the wish doesn't come true. Oh. You wish on stars, don't you, Stuart? Well, yeah, all the time. <laughs> Did you wish on a star when uh, you wanted to stop Scott from marrying Jillian? Oh, I wished and then I prayed and I wished some more. Yeah, but it took a clever strategy to do the trick, didn't it? Well, you and Liza are good at that. Well, no, I don't mean that as a criticism. I, I mean, it's just not me. It doesn't work for me. I throw pennies in fountains. It's a different style. Well, I throw pennies in fountains, and I wish on stars, too. Do you really? Yes, of course. I may mean, not very good at it, but yes, I do. Well, well that's, that's something I could help you with. I mean, it's something we could do together. Shall we wish on a star for Liza and Adam? The stars come out every night. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Marion. Well, good night. Oh, good night. I'll see you. That's not what I meant. That is what you said. When you were gaslighting me, how did you know about the pine coffin? Well, uh, my father saw her in it right before she was buried. Yes, but she was never really buried. What? Because she was never really dead. What? Adam, I went to Pigeon Hollow. I saw the medical records. There was an autopsy. Joy Hawkins died of internal injuries. Yes, yes. The doctor wrote into the report what we asked him to write into the report. To say, to rescue her from Lee. What? This wait, is wait, a total wait, 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 The doctor that signed the doctor off on her? The who saved her life that night. Yes, because she would have died without medical help. We knew the next time she wasn't going to be so lucky. So, we found Lee in a bar. We brought him and showed him Joy's body in the pine coffin. We told him the police were on their way to arrest him. He disappeared that night and, to my knowledge, never came back. All right, okay, so what happened to Joy? Stu and I got together what money we could and gave it to Joy. She left Pigeon Hollow that night for good. We filled the casket with sand and buried it. We could never tell anyone that Joy was still alive. Not even her sister, your Aunt Lola. No, because we were afraid Lee would find out and come after her. Camille, I... I didn't kill your mother. I loved her. It's not true. If my mother was alive, she would have sent for me. She couldn't. She would have forfeited her life if she had. She knew you were in good hands with your Aunt Lola, and she knew that Lee was in touch with her. Aunt Lois never would have told my father if she thought my mama was in any danger. You can't be sure of that. But we're missing the point here. The point is your mother may still be alive. And if she doesn't know your father's dead, she may still be hiding someplace. Exactly. We have to do everything we can to find Stop her. Stop Stop torturing me. You, you're just desperate because I found you out. And now you're covering it up with more lies. I understand. I understand. You're so filled with hate for me right now that you can't see past that. But I swear to you, everything I've said tonight is God's truth.
You bought that, didn't you? How do we know we won't slip under again? We've ordered a complete neural workup. We're just waiting for the test results. Well, when is that coming back? Before or after he suffers I, a relapse? I'll see what I can do. I'll go lean on the lab. You're back in town. Yes, so it would seem. I, I didn't think that you were due. I, I came as soon as Joe called. Yeah, it's wonderful about Mateo. Yes, yes. And you? Well, am I wonderful? Don't you already know? Oh, I hope I didn't scare you. Oh, Stuart. Oh, please. Why, why were you lying on the floor like that? I was being a work of art. What are you talking about? A couple of months ago, I commissioned an installation artist to give me a living tableau. And though this is it, it's sort of a dead tableau. <laughs> but I like it. You want to try it out? No, 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 no. I, I, I hate to be the one to tell you this, Stuart, but that outline is, is not a work of art. Oh, there's all kinds of art these days. No, Matt. there was a homicide here tonight. A homicide? Yes, I heard it on the radio. Here? They just said some a murder at the Chandler Gallery, uh, and they didn't know the details, so I just jumped in my car, and I broke all speed records getting here, and then I found you lying there on the floor. What? And I'm just so glad that, that you're all right. And... Hey! Oh. How did you two get in here? I just went for coffee. Didn't you see the crime scene tape? Uh, I, I came in the back door. I, I own this gallery. Uh, I'm Stuart Chandler. Pleased to meet you. I'm in trouble. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to leave. It's my first day, first assignment. I... Oh, well, your secret is sure safe with us, darling. Uh, this is my friend, Marion. Hello. Uh, what happened? Who was killed? I'm not allowed to say, but it was pretty grisly. Oh. Well, you... Marion, are you all right? I just think I... Uh... I think I'd better get out of here, Stuart. Sure, sure. Come on, this... we'll go. We'll go. Just You can lean on me. Come on, don't just, don't step on it. Thank you. I'll uh, come back. Why? Well, I'm fond of Haley and Mateo, and I'd like to see him. Well, I'm, I mean, why run off? Family first. Surely Marion didn't teach you that. I picked up a few things on my own. Yeah, more than a few. Just tell uh, Haley that I'll come tomorrow. Well, stay. 
I'm sure Mateo and, 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 and Haley would be delighted to see you. All right, fine. I'll stay. Oh, by the way, I got the check from your accountants. Thank you. <laughs> Thank the courts. Uh, it wasn't a gift. I could tell there was no velvet box. No, well, there's plenty of those in the barn. Your personal items I boxed and stored in the barn. I'll get them out of your way. Well, there's no hurry. They're hardly in my way. I seldom go into the barn. Still, just knowing that they're there. Yeah, of course. You want what's yours. What do you think? Tonight, we honor Liza Colby and her sizzling performance. Bye-bye.